It's 6 p.m., so I'll call this uh, March 26, 2024, regular meeting of the Wenatchee School District School Board to order. And we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Este junta se llama a cabo en inglés, pero contamos con servicio de traducción si alguien gusta hacer un comentario público o recibir explicaciones en español, por favor indique su necesidad. Uh, we will now begin by working through the consent, working through the agenda. Are there any proposed changes or modifications to the agenda? I am loud tonight. <laughs> All right, then we will start with the consent agenda. Um, the items on the consent agenda were sent to the board and posted online last week. The board has had an opportunity to review the material and individually ask the superintendent any questions on any item on the agenda. This agenda consists of the minutes from the March 12th, 2024 um, regular board meeting, the March 18th, 2024 workshop meeting minutes, vouchers and payroll, personnel report, surplus report, the asset protection program report, and the March enrollment report. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I approve the, yeah, I make a motion to approve the consent <laughs> agenda. Sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> so, so moved, second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Um, next we have our, I think we move right along to special presentations. So first up, we have a long overdue ASB update. Oh, I guess I'll start by introducing my, my folks next to me. So of course, this is our Vice President Max, and we'll get into during our little talk, but we'll get into we just actually had our new ASB elections. So this is our new ASB president, Nico Kaitis. We'll have her say a little bit once we get a little farther down. But like we said, it's been a little bit since we've come. So we're moving all the way back to December, I believe. Um, in December, we had a senior movie night that was planned by our amazing senior senate, where we worked with Mr. Kaitis on baking cookies at the tech center in order to give them out to the senior students. And it was actually open to any class to come and watch the Polar Express. From there, we had our holiday craft fair that happens every year that the Golden Apple Band is a big part of and helps run and helps move all of the booths and all of that thing, all of those. So that was, as always, very successful. That's a big part of our Wenatchee traditions. And then over Christmas break, we actually had a little ASB lock-in at the school where we just kind of stayed the night at the school and were able to prepare for our litter box game that happens every year. And so we were able to make posters and prepare some of those last minute things. And then moving on to the litter box game, that went amazing. As a reminder, we team up with Make-A-Wish Foundation and Eastmont to raise money for a beneficiary. This year, uh, we raised $10,000 for Johnny, a sophomore at Wenatchee High School who is battling leukemia. And we were able to also then make him the recipient of our Janice Franz. So moving on to Janice Franz, we had, I know a lot of you were actually there as our amazing judges, but we had three nights of performers and each night again had at least one of you. And we were able to raise... $4,920.69 for Johnny. So these funds went more towards his medical sides of things versus the uh, litter box game went more towards his make a wish. So what he wanted versus medical. So we were able to donate a big portion to both sides. 
Uh, we also have our Winter Wishes fundraiser going on. So our amazing culture team has fundraisers and raises money in order to get hopefully at least every single student one winter wish. So whether that's a bag of chips or someone asked for earmuffs or random things, but we're able to raise a lot of money and be able to just have something fun at the high school going on. So yeah, with that, we'll go on to our elections, which I'll have Max talk about because our amazing vice president ran them. Hello, it's nice to see you guys again. It's been a while. Um, so it was like last week we had like elections. So we first had like preliminary elections. So like when we had more than two um, candidates going for the same role, we have them like um, make videos, like like candidate speeches, like why people should run for them, like their whys, their goals, what they want to like see changes in the school. And we also have like little like table setups during like lunch. So the students can come in and like ask questions and like, why do you want to like run? Like, why should I vote for you? So just like they can meet their candidates. And so then we have our final elections and we have like the same thing where people can get to know their candidates and get to know the people who like they want to represent them. And so we have our wonderful ex-secretary, now president, Nico Kaitis. And then we have our ex treasurer now vp darren sorum and then we have our secretary martin diaz and then our treasurer uh nora doman sorry i almost forgot her name and then yeah that's that kind of concludes elections and yeah so uh, in a second again we'll have nika she just introduced herself i guess but just for kind of what we have coming up that we'll have the amazing nico come talk to you guys about but coming up we will have prom in April. So the theme this year is masquerade ball. So we've been doing a lot of fundraising in that area and our junior Senate plans that dance and they're incredible. They have all of these amazing things set up. So you'll get to hear all about that as well as our annual FFA plant sale. So that's really fun. I'm actually on the general publicity team. So when you see that banner with the little farmer panther, that was me. Um, so look forward to that. Make sure to come. It's May 1st through the 3rd. And yeah. So we'll I just have Nico introduce herself and whatnot. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Nico Kaitis, and I'm going to be this upcoming year ASB president. And I'm super excited for this opportunity. I've been involved in ASB like since I could walk. So um, I'm I'm very excited for what's to come and to be able to continue um communicating with you guys about what's happening at Wenatchee High School. So I think that's everything, unless anybody has any questions. I don't okay. have any questions, but it's great to have you here. Thank you very much for coming. It's always good to hear the many welcoming things that you do in the high school. Thank and you. I was going to comment when you talked about Make a Wish and the amount of money you raised. A former ASB coordinator was very impressed at how much money you made. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. It, yeah, we're very excited about what we were able to do. I just want to say congratulations on oh. your role as Apple Blossom Princess. Thank you. Um, in your involvement. Yes. Thank you. And then I see Lexi back here. I have the honor of working. Le Lexi's also another Apple Blossom Princess, and I have the honor of working with Lexi at the college. So, and um, she is our A is our Senate president at the college. So thank you for joining. Yes. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, we will see you next month. Thank you very thank much. You for having us. It's nice Great to see you guys. All of you. Thank, thank you. you. We have an update from West Side. All right. Hello, my name is Frankie Pantoja. I'm from West Side High School, and I'm excited to be here today and update you on what's been going on since I was here last, um, which seems like such a long time ago. <laughs> Um, Westside Leadership is holding our 8th Annual Spaghetti Feed and Silent Auction on May 23rd. Our recipient is Cooper Bauman, which is a middle schooler at Pioneer. Cooper is battling stage 2 Hodgkin's lymphoma, so we would love to see you all there. And we're currently accepting donations for the Silent Auction. 
Our partnership, we also have our partnership still going on. It will continue with Bombas as we just have been approved for another 10,000 pairs of socks, which should arrive next fall. And the Leadership Club will be hosting Prom again this year on May 10th. And last week, we had poet Ricardo Ruiz working with students on a three-day workshop learning about writing poetry. And I'm honored to say that I attended that. It was really cool. And that same week, Miss Devereaux became a human ice cream sundae by students who all bought yearbooks. In case you're wondering, you can watch it on Westside social media. Um, we also had staff and students participate in a school culture workshop with a representative from AWSL and from that we have created a new GSA club and Westside student advisory team. And in the works is a new student mentor group. We're excited to spend upon that in our next workshop in April. This is all I have for you this evening. Are there any questions? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Frankie, for coming. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks to all of our students for uh, being here tonight and sharing their ASB updates and reports. We appreciate you all being here and congratulations on all the things. So excellent. Uh, next up, we have our budget update for this evening, and we should have a uh, slide deck that will that Liz will pop up there momentarily. And uh, we will get started with that. So good evening, uh, board members, cabinet members, staff and community. Uh, thank you for tuning in this evening. Uh, tonight's update uh, is basically addressing some of the questions that have come up from previous board meetings and from citizen comment in the past. All right, perfect. And uh, so this first slide is, you know, addressing the question, how will the budget reductions be made? And so this is a graphic that uh, that we have uh, come up with to show and, and articulate that graphically as opposed to a, a, a list. So it, uh, the top the top row there, are the uh, the grade level uh, budget reductions, um, starting off with the proposed Columbia closure there at two point eight million. Uh, our middle school schedule changes and then the subsequent uh, staffing reductions there at two million. Then our high school change and the staffing reductions there at uh, six hundred and seventy-one thousand dollars, and then on the second row there we have uh, additional staffing reductions equaling a million dollars, and then our materials, supplies, and operating costs those MSOCs at two point five million uh, to equal uh, eight point nine million overall, and each one of these pieces is vital for the Wenatchee School District to move forward uh, with the level of financial health for the future. Um, each, uh, even with the dramatic reductions for 24, 25, we will have uh, more uh, reductions in the future based on enrollment. And that leads us to another, another question, why multi-year reductions? And so when enrollment decline happens and we do not make the necessary reductions, um, our revenues and expenditures are out of balance and we have to dip into our savings. The more we dip into our savings, the less we have for emergencies like HVAC issues at Wenatchee High School or other emergencies. We have past enrollment decline and overstaffing that has not uh, been addressed um, in the past. We also have annual concerns of inflation that compound each year to increase uh, the cost of staffing. The Wenatchee School District uh, has experienced enrollment decline for the better part of the last nine years, about 915 students. Uh, this year, we lost 183 alone. However, this is the first year that we have made budget reductions since 1819, and we have increased staffing during the time of this decline, so we have some catching up to do. Um, our projected trend of enrollment decline is, is one that is continuing. And as we have here on the slide, we see some opportunities that our community can choose from uh, for, for other schooling aside from the Winnie School District. Uh, and natural inflationary cost to salaries and benefits and MSOC is rising every year. This is a slide that we have, oh, sorry, whoops. This is a slide that um, we have shown in the past and it shows our enrollment um, and how our enrollment directly affects um, the state and federal funding sources, which impact the bulk of our revenues. Uh, therefore, declining enrollment means corresponding decline in revenues from state and federal sources, which in turn means needed adjustments for our expenses. Um, 
And so we have, we've seen that slide before, but just to illustrate um, the need. Uh, and then also the next slide that we have seen and shown before are part of our written analysis here is you can see um, how enrollment trends together with staffing trends illustrate that need for realignment. A uh, question has come up about not seeing any reductions at the district office uh, throughout the budgetary reduction process. Um, here are some of the reductions, or here are the reductions at the district office. Um, all of these reductions um, do put uh, pressure and responsibility on those who are left uh, to do the necessary duties, assignments, and remain accountable for the work that was previously shared. Um, we have been able to do these reductions through uh, resignations and retirements. Um, to look at those nine positions there. Uh, some of the uh, district and administrative updates that have taken place as well that we have not had a chance to announce uh, publicly, but have shared with families and schools involved. Um, so these district shifts that have come up recently due to new opportunities in the district. And so we congratulate uh, state and federal director, Jeremy Wheatley, who has accepted a superintendent position in Dayton School District, uh, his hometown. So he's excited about that. Um, and that has uh, moved uh, Lincoln principal Tim Shepard over to take over the state and federal director position. Uh, because of those changes uh, that we didn't know about earlier, uh, principal Yanez and assistant principal Dilly will stay at Newberry. And then if Columbia does close, then principal Stuber and assistant principal Oaks will move to Lincoln, uh, where some of the Columbia students will go. Speaking of state and categorical funding, uh, how do we leverage that uh, state and categorical funding for staffing? And uh, most of our special program funding has a very specific use and purposes and purpose um, and uh, support specific student populations. And we are unable to fund classroom teachers through these restrictions. However, we do fund positions with, uh, with the special program dollars. There's a common practice that we braid the funding where appropriate to pay for staff. In our special programs department, we have very competent special program staff who manage these funds and have been creative with how uh, they use those funds. The consolidation will allow us to maximize these resources in six buildings instead of seven. Each school that will be receiving new students will see increases in those dollars. Um, just as an aside, uh, consequently, our state auditors reported being very impressed with our special programs reporting last year when they concluded their audits from the Wenatchee School District. Uh, safe routes to school updates. Uh, safety, student safety is paramount. And the work with our local law enforcement and the City of Wenatchee and Traffic Safety Commission are underway for us helping to elevate the three E's of traffic safety, enforcement, education, and engineering. Uh, we're working with the city on safe routes um, and problem areas such as Ferry Street Crossing. Um, our collaboration with the Washington Traffic Safety Commission is underway, and we will be collaborating with the Traffic Enforcement Unit as well. Also looking at adult crossing guards and a decision-making matrix there and outlining the educational partnership and campaign uh, with many partners there. And it, it has been mentioned that some of the work that is involved does include some grant writing, and there are some elements that can take some time to implement. Um, but there are some things that can happen more immediately that we were discussing with the city and things like uh, potentially uh, removing some parking on Ferry Street to help increase uh, visibility uh, for students in that area, or helping to change Ferry Street to a school zone to moderate the traffic speed. So we're excited about these opportunities. Um, we also are looking at some of these short-term gains, um, as well as uh, the long-term gains that would include the grant writing um, and also include maybe some more timely projects. Consulting with our external experts. Uh, it was brought up that uh, due to the situation in Bainbridge Island School District and their director of finance vacating the position and the ESD stepping in to cover the financial operations of the district, that North Central ESD 
uh, review the Wenatchee School District's budget as well. And so I thought I would share a slide deck um, or a slide on um, how North Central Educational School District uh, budget is already involved um, with the Wenatchee School District and how they can be involved in different ways in the future too. So um, hang on, let me see here. Uh, each year, the North Central uh, Educational School District, or I'll just refer to them as the ESD, reviews the Wenatchee School District uh, projected budget in July. Tricia Schock and Jason Williams review all five funds, the General Fund, Capital Projects Fund, the Debt Service Fund, the Transportation Fund, and the ASB Fund. In addition, they review what is called the four-year budget forecast, uh, which goes over enrollment, staffing, fund balance, and overall projections for the four years. It is uh, state law that uh, budgets be submitted and, re and reviewed by local ESDs uh, by July 10th each year. Once the ESD has completed its review, they give feedback and have dialogue until they're satisfied, and the budget is then sent back to the district where um, it goes for approval in front of the school board. Uh, this year's review resulted in accolades uh, from the ESD uh, for our finance team. After the board approval, the budget is sent off to the Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction, or OSPI. Uh, the ESD continues to monitor our budget monthly uh, through the school board reports that Sean shares in the consent agenda and through his presentations. So we met with uh, the ESD on Friday, um, their finance team, and uh, had a few, um, had some confirmational uh, details from that Um the confirmation of the need for significant budget cuts due to enrollment decline, overstaffing, and inflationary costs uh, confirmed that the tracking area era of 2022 is not the reason for the budget concerns. The true concern uh, were from increased uh, staffing, um, which I need to, I see it, an error there, I apologize, were from increased staffing and declining enrollment leading up to that tracking error. Um, continued with uh, planned, continuing with planned reductions will help maintain overall financial health uh, over the long run. Uh, we have also requested some additional time with the ESD for a deeper dive into our budget um, and our budget reduction proposal, and we'll set that set those up in the coming days. Uh, there has also been uh, some questions about the Davis demographics contract, uh, which was initially requested to obtain some demographic information about the Wenatchee School District to help inform future budget uh, reduction decisions for 24, 25, and beyond. Uh, the district's last demographic study was from 2020, and we needed some fresh data um, and more appropriate data. So we, uh, but we also did add a request to review uh, our boundary information in January in case this information would be needed in subsequent years um, due to budget reductions uh, or a need to redistribute students across the district, maybe at middle school or even at, uh, at elementary. Uh, so they have, um, we will get a full uh, presentation from Davis Demographics on April 9th. And they have, they have shared, uh, a graph with us here that I can share about some of the details of the information that they are going to be sharing with us. This line graph is a snapshot of five-year and 10-year net change um, for our elementary schools based on the numbers that uh, Davis Demographic has come up with. Um, you can see that the projections um, for Columbia's continued decrease in enrollment uh, are shown there in the five-year and 10-year marks. Um, the numbers also tell us that uh, the boundary populations for both Washington and Lincoln are due to decrease as well based on uh, Davis's numbers there. As I mentioned, Davis will uh, be creating the rest of their report and we will have a presentation from them on April 9th. Uh, another group that we are working with is the company Teeter Crocker and they work with us under our contract with Turner, Townsend and Heary. Um, and this graph here shows um, this is their percent change model on enrollment decline. So that's what this is just to illustrate that the enrollment decline projections from the district are uh, uh, the results are being shared by outside experts in their field and are showing the same trend um, that we are getting there as a district as well. Another outside agency that we've been working with and have mentioned is Moody's Credit Rating uh, Consultants. 
They've spent time with the school district and also worked with uh, our financial partners at Piper Sandler to understand the school district and its financial placement to issue a credit rating that helped the district refinance bonds for overall savings for our taxpayers. Uh, they gave the school district a double A3 rating, which is their fourth highest rating out of 21 ratings. Uh, they shared that the district has a strong financial position, there's growth in assessed values, and their implied debt service as percent of revenue, and their AA3 median. So the concerns, um, their concerns as shown here on the graph are obviously enrollment decline and low residential income. Uh, the quote from our press release uh, said, Moody's has given the district positive rating because of the financial reserves and management which positions it well in the face of declining enrollment. The district has also intentionally built up its reserves through 2023 and has a comprehensive reduction plan uh, recommended by leadership to keep reserves at satisfactory level. However, significant expenditure reductions will be necessary to balance operations in 24-25. And then the other partnership, the people that really get to audit um, our work is the state auditor's office. Um, there, they have an annual visit, um, which I believe they just left yesterday. Um, the auditor's office mission is to provide citizens with independent and transparent examinations of how state and local governments use public funds and develop strategies that make government more efficient and effective. Each year, the state auditor's office uh, examine the management use and safeguarding of public resources to ensure there is protection from misuse and misappropriation. They also evaluate whether there is reasonable assurance for adherence to applicable state laws, regulations, policies, and procedures. And they also do an in-depth review of financial statements and grant compliance. Okay. Another question um, that was brought up was how did we prioritize the not recommended list? Um, and as the slide says here, each item on the not recommended list uh, aligns to something that each of our 6,800 students uh, benefit from currently and could continue to benefit from even if Columbia were to close. Um, even with the potential closure of Columbia, each student in our district essentially has the ability to have a trusting relationship with an assistant principal an opportunity to eventually or currently be involved in a sporting activity or extracurricular opportunity of some kind. And then the added benefit of uh, the support or relationship with the school resource officer. Uh, can costs be reduced through salaries and benefits? Um, salaries and benefits are bargained through contract negotiations. Um, opportunities to reduce through uh, resignations, retirements, and provisional employees have how we has how we have uh, typically done our reductions. Um, and in order to retain highly skilled and trained employees to compete locally, we need to maintain the salaries and benefits we currently have. Um, we are not as competitive um, as Eastmont in most of our bargain contracts even now. And then there was a question on uh, some, some numbers that uh, changed, I believe, from the written analysis to the addendum. And so there was a 783,675 difference between the district savings of closing Columbia in that written analysis in February 20, uh, 12th, um, and then the addendum on March uh, 12th as well. So we wanted to clarify that in February, we were using average teacher salaries. And in March, we were able to use actual teacher salaries, um, those teachers that would potentially be impacted. Um, and some of the uh, staff that were receiving uh, the, the non-renewals, um, you know, they did not have salaries that were as high as even the average teacher salaries. So that made an impact. We also have been able to retain a few more staff uh, since the February 12th date by adding some transition to kindergarten classes. The March 12th number is more refined and in line with, uh, with the current realities. Uh, we also had some, uh, some concerns with class sizes and spaces and uh, the potential closing of Columbia um, does help to keep class sizes at or below contract size. And that is our goal uh, in the district. Next year, we'll have an even smaller number of elementary students entering um, into our schools. 
and uh, going from six schools to seven, or from, uh, sorry, seven schools to six, uh, and the movement of both teachers and students allow our numbers to normalize appropriately. In addition, our newer buildings, uh, Washington and Lincoln, newer or newly uh, re redesigned, um, have specifically designed spaces to allow for intervention and have specifically designed instructional spaces included to help support student learning. Um, we also have properties and capital projects. Um, we are not able to sell property to pay for staff. Um, the proceeds of any sale of property would return to our capital projects fund, which can only be used for other facilities and other capital projects. We cannot pay for staffing. Um, if it, if it could, it would be um, it would be something that we could use for a one year fix, but we are not able to do that. We also have the funds for our girls softball field uh, that has been set aside by the board since 2021 to resolve a Title IX concern. And our girls deserve a place to play where we have an obligation. Uh, we also have the obligation from the Federal Office of Civil Rights to provide that facility for our girls to play. And I think to to end, just uh, an acknowledgement that this process that we are going through right now is exceedingly hard. It's taxing. It's emotionally exhausting for all involved. Um, I think that we can agree that it is unfortunate that this is where we find ourselves as a district with regard to budget reductions um, and aligning expenses to revenues. But I also think that we are all committed to see the district through these challenges. Um, and yeah, uh, just with that, I'll pass uh, some time on to our board members for comments or concerns. My only comment would be that it, I think that addresses many of the questions that have been asked in an objective way. And I think I'm very appreciative of seeing it in this form. Can you go back to the slide from the Davis demographics and kind of explain the the bars too? Because I see like more most of the schools with the negative is that saying that that's the declining enrollment, but like Lewis and Clark, Sunny Slope, and Newberry would see a higher enrollment. Is that how I'm seeing it? Yeah. So the uh, the first bar that you see is kind of the darker color. I apologize about the colors. Um, uh, the darker bar is the five-year trend, and so you can see that there does appear to be some uh, some growth in the Lewis and Clark and in the Newberry area, um, and those are based on uh, contracts and permitting that are happening in the uh, in the Wenatchee School District area um, for new housing. And uh, so you can see that there's a little bit of growth there from Lewis and Clark and Newberry, and a little skosh there for Sunny Slope. Did they explain why there may be such a decline in the other school district areas? Is it just because of housing or is it, what did they explain? What yeah, they the, la the, the lack of, the lack of potential growth in the, in the area. Yep. And there's no permitting uh, that is uh, foreseen for any future development. And they'll have a, they'll have a, a better explanation when they come and present their entire report to us as well. Thanks for Miranda. Will they also have numbers just since, you know, 40% or the percentages don't necessarily represent yep. actual numbers for the district? Yeah, they have, uh, they'll have some tables and charts that will have the actual numbers. Yeah. Good question. Thanks, Miranda. Um, are we going to see before the May 14th different options on we had a bunch of things. This is not recommended. This is not recommended. Mm -hmm. Will we have a chance to vote on different options as we've heard a lot of people request right. before then? Yeah, we can set that up. Okay. Thanks, Decker. Okay. Yes, we can move along to Sean Fitzgerald. Have you come on up here and we'll get your slide deck ready, Sean. Thank you for 
uh, sharing some information with us about uh, legislative session updates now that the session concluded on March 7th. Oh, do you need a clicker? I've got it. All right, thank you. President Norton, members of the board, and Dr. Callahar, thank you for being here tonight to have a quick update on our legislative session, which concluded earlier this month. Um, just a quick background during the last presentation, again, even in odd years, uh, we were in the short session for 2024, so it was a 60 days, it was very quick. Uh, we conv it convened on January 8th and ended on March 7th, and uh, as opposed to next year, which will be the long session, which will last 105 days. So as opposed to getting budget information in March, we will get it at the end of April for next year. Uh, some of the issues going through, uh, just following up on the last update. So um, para-educator para -edu compensation was a big discussion point this year. Uh, Superintendent OSPI Superintendent Reichdahl had proposed a seven dollar uh, per hour increase for para educators, and the Governor Inslee had proposed a three dollar increase per hour. Uh, neither of those bills had passed. Um, in lieu of that, they did increase the legislature did increase the prototypical staffing model uh, for para educators. Um, I want to get them all right. Paraeducators, office support, and non-instructional aides. And we will see this increase in the current year and the next year. Um, since the increase occurred after the start of this school year, we'll see retroactive payments going back to the beginning of the year, but we won't likely see that additional funding uh, through our state apportionment reports either in July or August. It's still being determined. Um, on the MSOC front, our materials, supplies, and operating costs. Um, an initial bill was proposed for an increase of over $40 uh, per student FTE. Um, it then went down to $23 and then finally passed at $21 per student for both the current and the next year. Um, well, for the current year, and then will be adjusted for inflation for the following year. Um, so both in those terms of both staffing and MSOC funding, we're going to be seeing some slight increases um, working on the final dollar amount uh, that we'll see in July and August for both salaries and benefits in certain areas, uh, but also uh, our material supplies and operating costs. Um, regionalization, unfortunately, as we um, assumed before the start of the legislature, we didn't expect regionalization funding to continue. Um, and so that has been completely eliminated. So going forward for the next school year, uh, Wenatchee School District will not be uh, receiving that extra funding that would go to salary funding. Um, on the capital projects front, uh, there was a couple of large bills uh, that were being discussed. Uh, first, House Bill 1044 was capital funding for struggling school district. Uh, unfortunately, uh, and this was a uh, capital assistance to school districts that have demonstrated funding challenges. And again, unfortunately, this bill died um, during the legislature. There was also Senate Bill 5949, however, that did pass, and this related to the School Construction Assistance Program, or SCAP, and relating to its construction cost allowance account. So basically, SCAP funding is there um, when school districts are seeking new school construction, you pass a bond, then you can apply for the um, additional funding from the state, and if you fall within some eligible parameters, they will provide additional funding to assist with school construction. Um, so essentially, SCAP funding was increased by, I mean, they do the funding by square foot. Uh, so we went from $271 to 375 per square foot. And then the legislative intent is to increase this funding each year uh, by the state agency inflation rate. Any questions on those? No, all right. Moving on, transportation. 
Um, Senate Bill 6031 uh, was exploring expanding the transportation vehicle fund to allow school districts to purchase more than just yellow school buses out of that fund. Um, so maybe it can custom tailor to school specific school district needs um, and also review the funding formula for the transportation operations. Um, unfortunately, this bill died, so there's going to be no changes uh, to the transportation vehicle fund or how transportation operations funding is uh, funded in the future. There is also House Bill 1368 related to electric buses. Um, it eliminated a hard timeline to transition from diesel or gas to um, electric buses, and it provides grant funding for districts that choose to start transitioning. Um, and then slowly changing the funding formula as your electric bus fleet um, overtakes your gas or your propane, you know, diesel uh, fuels, and then it kind of changes how you're reimbursed. Um, some of the concerns, although there's no timeline and there is grant funding, uh, there were concerns from uh, WASA, um, the uh, Association of Schools, uh, and just looking at whether this is really covering the total cost of electric buses, uh, including cost of inf uh, infrastructure or maintenance or other electricity needs. Um, last part for transportation was House Bill 1248, uh, professional services contracts. So going forward, uh, school districts that contract uh, for pupil transportation services uh, have to provide the contracting um, or make sure I'm reading this correctly, uh, requires the contracting employer to provide health benefits and pension contributions equivalent to those of school district classified employees. Um, so if we're looking to contract out for any school transportation, we'll be taking a close look at those contracts before moving forward. Um, House Bill 1915, there was a financial gra education graduation requirement, although this doesn't relate to budget. Uh, there was consider considerations of a financial education course required to graduate, but this did not pass. Um, and then also we have our special education funding. So last year, the special education funding cap was raised from 13.5% to 15 uh, this year, they increased in an additional 1% to 16%. So basically, that means your special ed uh, special education enrollment divided by your total BA enrollment essentially gives you that percentage. Uh, so that increase uh, in the funding cap will allow us to provide um, additional funding um, as our special education enrollment continues to increase. Um, last but not least... We also had our running start bill, and now going forward, this bill passed 10th graders uh, going into their junior year uh, can now enroll into running start courses during the summer before the start of their junior year. They're allowed to take up to 10 credits. Uh, we're paying close attention to this one, and we're waiting on further guidance from OSPI, especially on the enrollment part and how that will look. And then last but not least, as Dr. Kalahar mentioned in our last board meeting, the Skills Center had been awarded a uh, $14.5 million for the expansion of the Tech Center. And uh, looking forward to that funding and seeing what that can be done uh, to expand the opportunities there. And that is the update. Is there any questions? I do have one, Sean. Yeah, I think it's a very minor ma matter, and I don't know whether any, we would uh, be benefit in any way. I understand there was a ninth uh, grade initiative to focus. I think it was three million dollars more across the state in schools focusing on that critical year. Okay, uh, it's a uh, guppy. Is it anything that you know about that? Um, I can take a further look into it and provide okay. more information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So moving along, we've uh, next up is citizen comment. If any member of the public would like to make a citizen comment, please sign up online 15 minutes before the meeting or in person. Paper forms are available at the entrance to the meeting room and can be completed and given to the board secretary, Kim White. Unless translation is required, each comment is limited to three minutes, and Ms. White will keep a timer that will notify you when your time expires. If you need translation services from Spanish to English, a certified translator from CAFE is here to 
uh, assist. And we appreciate the continued partnership with CAFE and they are both back there waving their hands. Um, to clarify, individuals who need translation services will be given a total of seven minutes to make their comments. That encompasses four minutes to actually speak your comment in Spanish and then three more minutes to allow for translation. Um, we also have headsets available and will translate all English speaking public comments into Spanish. Please feel free to use one of the headsets that are available on the back table. Um, we assume that several of you are here regarding the potential consolidation of our elementary schools. Uh, please be advised the district has one more public hearing scheduled to allow for testimony before a final decision is made on the potential consolidation. The final hearing will be conducted on April 18th, 2024 at 6 p.m. at the Wenatchee High School Commons. Please be aware the board is not obligated to respond to questions or challenges made during public comment and the board's silence will not signal agreement or endorsement with a speaker's remarks. We appreciate you being here this evening and would like to remind you that all public comments should adhere to the same standard of civility that the board imposes on itself and the board will exercise its authority to maintain a content, maintain order in a content neutral manner this evening. So having said that, uh, Kim, do we have any comments? Uh, we have Gabriel Hamilton and then uh, Dr. Jennifer Unger, who signed up online, if they're here. Doesn't look like it. Do you have anybody online, Liz? Okay, so apparently they did not show. So next we have Aaron Geringer and then Ann Young. Good evening, everyone. I'm here tonight in the hopes that we can all do some thinking around what's priority these days. Specifically, what is the priority of the Wenatchee School District? I'm curious because I thought I knew. It seemed like a no-brainer. It's right in our mission. We promise to build a foundation of diversity, equity, and inclusion from which each student emerges future ready. The discussion since January has been about that. It's been about, hasn't been about that. It's been about numbers budget shortfalls, cost savings, busing distances, maximum class classroom sizes, school enrollments, FTEs, percentages, facts, figures, line items, and spreadsheets. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I love numbers. Math is my jam. It's by far my favorite subject to teach. It isn't, however, what should be at the heart of our work as teachers or as a school or a district. Our students should be. A balanced budget is a good thing. A balanced budget that harms our, our reason for being here, that breaks our promise, seems like a non-starter. Let me put it another way. Where is the data that shows the impact of this closure on the students of Columbia Elementary? Has any time been spent analyzing the cost on their learning? Graphs made, spreadsheets calculated, Slick presentations, have we grappled with the expense of this closure and what it will cost on the bottom line of our students' future success? Shouldn't we? Don't we owe the students and parents of Columbia that much? Wouldn't it be great if at the end of all of this budget, budget madness, we could look at these parents in the eye and tell them that we have explored every option cut every corner, found every nickel and every dime to ensure their students' future success. Can any of you say that? I can't. And I'm looking at these parents every day when they come to my school. <clears throat> so what can be done? I don't know for sure. I mean, I'm a classroom teacher. I don't have access to all the information, but I know where I would start to look. Look at the, admin the district administration costs, Look at creative ways to use our existing buildings to enhance our current offerings. Align staffing to enrollment without closing a school. Trim budgets, don't eliminate them. Find ways to make us more nimble and agile and lean without doing harm to the people that we're trying to serve. Does this feel impossible? Perhaps that's simply because we, all of us, need time and hope and courage to do what's right and not what's convenient. Thank you. Thank you. Why does the short girl always follow the tall guy? Yes, every time. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so um, our district's webpage, it states, we promise to build a foundation of diversity, equity, and inclusion from which each student emerges future ready. The strategic plan part of the website lists one of our district's priorities as partnerships, relationships between students, families, schools, and communities that enhance the well-being and success. I ask you how what occurred at last Thursday night hearing fulfilled any of those, specifically what occurred with Marcos Corullo's statement. I wasn't actually planning on making a statement tonight until last Thursday's hearing when decisions were made that effectively silenced the voices of one of our Columbia parents. Many parents in our school have already felt like their voices aren't being heard. And with one translation problem after another, many have given up on trying to share their voice with you. There's, Thursday night, the translation, in my opinion, was good, but she had a different style than the one than the translation than the translators at past board meetings. Teachers are asked to adapt and adjust every day in our classrooms, and yet there was no adaptation or adjustment to the way that time was kept for statements made in Spanish to account for the different style of translation. It seems it would have been quite simple to adjust the timing to allow for translation time. It was not done. Marcus Corullo made his entire statement only to have the translator told to sum it up and that she only had one minute to do so. This was no fault of this father or the translator. It was yet one more instance of a voice being silenced and a member of a marginalized community being dishonored. I feel confident that it was not the intention of anyone on the board or in the cabinet to silence his voice, yet that's what happened. I decided I could not allow this to happen without speaking up. As I told you in my very first comment to the board, you are either part of the solution or you are part of the problem. And tonight, I'm being part of the solution and allowing a silenced voice to be heard because his words matter. His voice is important in this process too. And they, these are not my words, but his words. And I have someone following me up to finish. Hello, everyone, and good evening and to everyone in the board who is presiding over this meeting and to the body that gives life to our beautiful school, Columbia, Mr. Stuber and the rest of the teachers and each of the parents, representatives and little children who are here with us. My name is Marcus Corullo and my wife, Goraide Reyes. We are a migrant family. We are Venezuelans. We have arrived in this country, specifically to the town of Wenatchee, about a year and a half ago. It was painful for us. It is not a secret. The hard reality, the difficult situation politically and economically and socially, it was very difficult to leave our families and country. We abandoned everything because of the persecution. Everything happened to us. Thank God we have a life and we are finally here. We abandoned our families. Getting here was the best thing because God gave it, because God had a family for us, the family of Columbia Elementary School. But that's the first three minutes. Perfect. Roxana. Good evening. Uh oh, I want to break this. Um, Roxana Vernetta, and I'm going to finish uh, Mr. Carrullo's words. I want to say these words from the bottom of my heart. With these words, I want you to encom encompass what I feel, what my wife feels, and what my child feels. He is in first grade at this beautiful school. I want you to know that since we found out about the closure of this beautiful arc of salvation that this school is, we haven't overcome with deep grief. Because to know that a school does not turn 100 years old, not every day or everywhere does a school turn 100 years old. For reasons that are obvious and that can be summed with words because of a deficit, budget, or not enough budget, that a school is going to be closed. In reality, this is painful for us that a school is going to be closed. For us, as we come from Venezuela, we cannot understand it. When my son got home and told us that school was going to be closed, he did not know how to pronounce his vowels in English. We thank God and the talent talented teachers that he has had, Mrs. Young, who helped him in kinder, and then Miss Alanis. Thanks to them, he can now be called a bilingual child. He can speak Spanish, and now he speaks English very well. 
We cannot understand this. I want to exhort you in the name of God. I do not think the solution is the closure of this school. I do not believe it. I cannot imagine those who have worked arduously in the past to, to found this school and what now is still this beautiful school. If they had a life that, if they had life, if they had life and saw that the seed they planted and that a hundred years later, it is still maintained. If they had life right now, hearing that Colombia is threatened, I cannot imagine what would come out of their mouths. It is there that with all due respect that you all deserve, no, we cannot see it that way. It is not fair to think that it will close today, 21st day of March, that the decision has been taken to close it at all costs. Because we know, and from everyone that has spoken, we are going to cause an irreparable and irreversible damage in the life of the personnel that give life to this institution and to the children that give life to this school. I urge you in the name of God and in the love of God, we need to work together to find a solution. If it is called the government of Washington, if it is called the government of the country in the hands of President Biden, private enterprise of Wenatchee, but the solution has not to be the closure of Columbia. And these words resonate with me because my parents were not involved when I was a sixth, seventh and eighth grader. My parents didn't drive, my parents didn't speak English. And to see that this parent showed up with his heart on his sleeve, it's very meaningful because it really is a hard life to be an immigrant and not speak the language. So when parents show up, you got to give them that honor. Thank you. Thank you. Dorothy Ferguson and Lois Ferguson. Hello again. I am Dorothy Ferguson. I'm a member of the Columbia Parent Advocacy Group. Um, we've talked a lot about like what will save the Wenatchee School District. And we kind of came down to that. We need a vision. So what would be our vision? So I've been thinking about this. What are we good at? What will attract additional students to the Wenatchee School District? Well, I got my answer when uh, Principal Stuber shared information about the awesome student growth scores um, for Columbia students. And I, so I did some research on the OSPI web search, website, and I gave each of you a packet that has information on student growth for uh, Columbia, um, Lincoln, Washington, and all the other elementary schools um, in Wenatchee. So you have that information to review, please. Um, student growth is a measure over time, not just one score and a test. Attendance is also factored in. What we all want to see is for all students to have continuous growth. Did you know that Columbia Elementary has the highest student growth scores of all the schools in the Wenatchee School District? Not just the elementary schools, but all the schools in Wenatchee School District. What is happening at Columbia? That's what I would be asking. Could it be transition to kindergarten? Um, that program um, that contributed to student growth. In 2023, the, there was House Bill 1550 that passed. It established transition to kindergarten. I'm not sure how that's different than transitional kindergarten, but now we have officially transition to kindergarten with funding. Um, that's encouraging. That says the state wants us to move in that direction. The district did a thorough analysis of the number of empty classrooms in each building, but the district did not analyze what was happening in the occupied classrooms at Columbia and other schools. Columbia ranks among schools with the highest growth scores in Washington state. Um, you can see the uh, student growth scores for Lincoln and for Washington. Adding 170 students to Lincoln is detrimental to Lincoln students' education and will hinder student growth for Columbia students. Columbia Elementary is the Wenatchee School District's flagship for elementary education. Even with the same curriculum and similar student demographics, Columbia students have much higher levels of student growth. We should be celebrating and learning from Columbia's teachers, not closing the school with the highest student growth in the district, 
Again, I want to congratulate the Columbia students, teachers, parents for their work, which resulted in the highest student growth scores in the district. Good work, guys. Thank you. Thank you. At the public hearing last week, 63 people watched the first public hearing about the closure of Columbia Elementary being, being streamed on Zoom. Those 63 people were denied the opportunity to make a citizen's comment due to a decision by the school board. Julie Norton, board president, denied a request from Columbia's parent adv advocacy group for a citizen's advisory committee so parents could have input to these decisions. Parents are relegated to three minute citizen comments and the school board took that away from 63 parents. It appears you want to silence parents in the community. I want to share a concern about 170 students being moved to Lincoln Elementary. Lincoln Elementary has the lowest number of open classrooms, three. There are 24 classrooms in the kindergarten through fifth grades, but there is a need for 25 classrooms due to the five sections of fifth grade. Where will the extra classroom come from? Will music or art lose their classrooms? Will the special education structured learning or the K-5 communication classrooms be taken away or will students be put in a portable? Lewis and Clark will have 10 open classrooms. Newberry will have seven. Sunny Slope will have four. Washington will have three. Lincoln will have negative one. Cabinet administration cuts are due to retirement or resignation. Provisional teachers are cut when just starting their careers in education, not retirement or resignations. We need to look at the Wenatchee School District Cabinet at the highest level, taking one or two for the team. Thank you. Jessica O'Connor. Good evening. My name is Jessica. I'm a parent of a kinder and a future Columbia Cougar, also a part of the parent advocacy group, a very understanding, emotional, and sympathetic person. We heard me speak last Thursday at the public meeting. The last time, or the last time, maybe just one of the five times I've ever been at that high school. The very first time I was there for the kindergarten orientation, and that was really, really nice. Um, that was involvement from the start. That's where I met what I now consider my friends and family, the Columbia staff. Um, we've all sat here and talked about how we can budget on an individual level. Now let's chat about how we can have yard sales on a district level. This past weekend, my friend and I participated in our first ever craft fair. We paid a booth fee. We donated an item from our booth. The organization that held the craft fair sold snacks, sold drinks, sold raffle tickets. The donated items were a little bit more than just a dollar. The other vendors I spoke to talked about how craft fairs, bazaars, flea markets, essentially yard sales, were so fun. Watch ones they are attending and how they wish there were more to attend. Why does the district not hold such events? Quarterly, monthly, you can rent out space from the district or said school. You can charge a booth fee. You can get a donated raffle item. Colleges such as Clover Park Technical College and Lakewood rent out space at the colleges, ballrooms, meeting rooms, labs, softball fields. This is one way they decide to increase revenue during budget cuts, pre-COVID. Still going on today. We as a community are thinking outside the box. We are throwing out all of our ideas. Do we need a rent classrooms? The district office building roll value was appraised at nearly $2.3 million in 2015. That's from the public information records. We can shut the lights off in that building for a year or two, not sell it. I do have some ideas on that though. That's for a different day. The district can be absorbed into some unused classrooms around each school. The district will be more on a personal level with our teachers, our students, our parents, our community. The district will see how today-to-day -to -day is done. Decreasing staffing does not equal closing a school. You know deep down this is too fast. We all know what, that hard decisions in life are made but taking the time to weigh out the pros versus the cons, the good versus the bad, that's what is really hard. And that's what needs to be done today. 
I have so many more questions about the Davis report. I'm actually sad I won't be here at the next board meeting, but I do look forward to his report. I please ask you to vote no on May 14th. Don't close Columbia. Thank you. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you, everyone. Um, moving on, we have no action or discussions. We just jump straight to superintendent report. Okay. Um, all right, so congratulations to our high school and uh, middle school technology student associations who recently competed in the state competition. Students from Pioneer Middle School and Foothills Middle School qualified for uh, state this year, placing third in the in the trebuchet uh, competition and ranked eight in the vlogging competition. Wenatchee High School and Westside High School students participated in the Technology Student Association State Conference, competing in a variety of events. And we had a couple of students that were part of the audio podcast team and finished uh, in the top 10 for their category. Uh, so that is cool. There's no shortage of things that are going on that are, is uh, amazing to uh, share. We also have some high school teachers that were selected for a fellowship. Uh, Daniel Day and Molly uh, Rabbits um, have recently been selected for a prestigious five-year master teacher fellowship in Central Washington University's Robert Noyce Teacher Scholarship Program. And Daniel, who's been teaching science at the high school for six years, and Molly, who teaches science at Westside High School, are completing uh, STEM leadership trainings as part of the program. So that's exciting. Um, we also have uh, Mariachi Northwest uh, Festival kicks off this week, and uh, you're probably seeing a lot of that stuff get getting organized and ready to go. So Wednesday kicks off the 26th year of the Northwest Mariachi Festival. Um, and this fe festival is huge. Um, a lot of it is organized with uh, with a Wenatchee School District Mariachi Director, um, Eddie Cortez. Um, and it's one of the main mariachi events in Washington State, featuring three days of student workshops. That starts Wednesday, right, Maria? Is that right? Okay. Um, at Wenatchee Valley College, um, utilizing the college while they're on spring break, which is nice. Um, and a student showcase, and then the pro professional uh, gala that happens later. So I'm looking forward to seeing that uh, Thursday. Um, and that'll be, a, that'll be a fun event. So we also had State Knowledge Bowl competition last Saturday. I'm not sure if you are aware of that, um, but uh, I was honored to be able to help welcome all 90 schools um, at eight o'clock on Saturday morning that were there for this competition. It's a ton of brain power in that room. Um, and I just want to thank uh, Winnie High School coach Chris Cloak for organizing and prepping that huge event. Um, we also had um, some middle school CTE programs competing at Skills USA State Competition in Tacoma this past weekend. Uh, and we had okay, Pioneer Middle School had state champs in uh, in this in the CPR uh, competition. Foothills Middle School Middle School took state champs uh, in the sports medicine division, and the Orchard Middle School were state champs in the job skills demonstration section. So. Lots of good stuff happening there. And then I got to go to some fun stuff. Pioneer, a couple of weeks ago, Pioneers had uh, Pioneer Middle School had their family night, um, which was uh, super cool. There's a lot of things going on at Pioneer Middle School. When I walked in the door, I was greeted with the ability to buy dinner and raffle tickets. The hallways were packed with games and activities, and the school store was open for service. Pioneer Mariachi was playing. The cafeteria was full of people. There was dodgeball happening. Uh, very competitive dodgeball. Um, I was also able to chat with the PTA president, John Palmer, uh, who, who was a student of mine way back when. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Um, also uh, got to go to the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, the Wenatchee High School spring, uh, spring drama presentation. Uh, so I got to see Martin there. And when I walked in, I was giving, given a part in the play. So that was that was interesting. Um, so I was on stage uh, sitting with the spellers of the spelling bee. And I was, I think, I don't know, Martin, I was laughing pretty much the entire time because they were they were engaging with me as if I was part of the whole thing and talking this close to me. And it was it was quite quite impressive. But I'm anyway. gonna interrupt you. You were the brave one who volunteered to go on stage. Well, I ran like hang and refused. <laughs> it was, it was quite entertaining to be up there, but of course, um, I was given a word that there was no way I was going to be able to spell. So that 
I got to sit down summarily. And I think if I would have even come close to spelling it right, it, I still would have had the same, you need to sit down. Um, the I also was able to attend SkillSource 35th, uh, sorry, 34th annual uh, recognition banquet, which was uh, held at the Confluence Tech Center. And our very own Ron Brown and Noah Olson were selected as the two, 2023 awardees at the banquet for their work with our tech apprenticeship program. So it was great to see the two of them be celebrated on stage, as well as the amazing partnership uh, between the Wenatchee School District and the skill source. So, sorry, lots. Thank you. Yeah. Started this in this time? Then, um, last weekend was the Corley State Advisory Committee on Migrant Education's meeting in Yakima. And there are two people from the Wenatchee School District on that 21 member uh, committee. The other is Teresa Godina, the migrant recruiter for the district. Um, and uh, one thing I want to say about that is you hear a lot of, of things of what going at the state. And we made one small change. Uh, we talked to Dr. Kalahar and we decided we're going to do quick debriefings at the end of these quarterly meetings to make sure that nothing escapes the district group. So we had a very good meeting downstairs for a few minutes. And something else that was interesting, there are four students who are on the state committee, and we have three students on our own PAC core group. Um, and so one of the newly elected students is from Kashmir. So we've actually introduced them to each other, and it's possible there'll be some student exchanges at that level. And the students have been very, very powerful in that area. Um, another thing, little hobby I have is uh, driving equitable enrollment um, series for academic acceleration. And I sat in on the second meeting of that. And uh, that was really about dual credit, running start, CTE, all the other op options to do two things at once as you go through high school. One of the things I said was really important to get down into the middle schools and make people educated. And I'm using that as an illustration because I came away from 90 minutes of that uh, saying just about everything that they were recommending as best practices are in play in this district and when I reported back. Um, but the one thing that was a little bit interesting was they were struggling with their two doors. One is to have the opportunity and have the access and open the door. The other one is to find and see that the door is there. And actually the next uh, meeting on this series is gonna be how people can find, get they, they, the way they put it in English was how do people get to the kitchen table inside the houses with the parents and the students. Uh, and I think that's really, really important. Um, so that was uh, sitting on the edge, couple of things. And uh, Student Advisory Council, Superintendent's Advisory Council, great meeting. Very good to see people here today. And it was fun. I'm gonna be way briefer than that. Uh... <laughs> I wanted to apologize to the board and the district and the community for being late to the um, public hearing last week. It won't happen again. So I apologize for that. I don't have anything. Um, I would like to thank everyone that came out to the public hearing last Thursday and everyone that has been selling, sending emails to the board. Um, thank you for the communication. Um, I also want to see it, say that, you know, I hear you from the Spanish perspective, uh, the interpreting perspective. I, we have a lot of room for improvement and just know that, um, we are working on it. Um, you know, we hear you, we were, we're receptive to the feedback. Um, thank you to Roxana for sharing her experience, similar experience to many of, of, of many of ours. So that's something that we were striving to do better. And um, hopefully with your guys' two cents, my two cents, we can, um, you know, improve our system. I also want to thank the cabinet team and Superintendent Kalahar for addressing some of the challenging questions, um, great questions that came up during that public hearing, as well as emails. Um, not not easy, um, but I think this is the, a step in the right direction in regards to the transparency that um, we need to strive for. And again, it, I, I thank you to everyone. I will echo what Maria says. Thank you for everyone coming out last weekend at the public hearing. We do take seriously the opportunity to interact with each of you and recognize when when things aren't working out exactly as we intended. So we are making improvements as we can and 
um, you know, appreciate you bringing them to our attention. Hope you know that we are receptive and we are making changes as we as as we can so that everyone can participate as much as possible. Um, I'll just put it out there. I unilaterally don't make any decision regarding how participation works, what systems are available at any event. So um, it is not me deciding whether you can or cannot speak remotely or not. It is simply the limitations of that particular facility. Um, so we hear you. We invite you to still participate on Zoom. Um, any any regular meeting uh, that you are available, it's it's still available in our in our meeting room. Um, on to other things, um, superintendent and I attended the Chelan County leadership meeting last Friday. It's the second time they've put it on. They're going now from, I think, bi-monthly to potentially monthly where uh, Chelan County leadership in from the city, the college, the district um, kind of get together and talk about local projects and opportunities. And it's a pretty helpful, um, I guess, meeting so far to be able to just share what's going on, get some insight on um, some, learned of some interesting opportunities that are gonna be happening in terms of potentially an Amazon location that could bring bring businesses and employees and families and things and help some of our enrollment situation, more information on the Microsoft developments that are now uh, moving further along. So a lot of helpful information coming out of some of those meetings. Um, one other one I attended to was a little bit random. I wasn't sure exactly what hat I was wearing when I got there, but my name tag said uh, Wenatchee School Board. <laughs> so uh, the Wenatchee Valley Fire Fire Department um, in their first year of their alignment is now doing their strategic plan. And so they invited a, kind of a similar crowd, a lot of Chelan County leadership, folk, or actually Chelan and Douglas County because they're multi-jurisdictional, um, a lot of leadership folks to, to kind of do exactly what we did with our strategic plan, take some um, stakeholder feedback uh, to to be able to um, put out their plan eventually. So it was kind of neat to participate in that, um, especially since we've been through that process fairly recently. So that was interesting. And then I'll just finish by saying congratulations to our mock trial team that I heard took home fourth place um, it's a combination of Wenatchee High School and West Side students, so a neat little partnership there. And I believe two of our West Side students actually got witness special awards for for their witness roles. So congratulations to the students. And that's all I got. Anything else? There is nothing else. I will ad adjourn. <laughs>